Hi, everybody. So I'm an analyst who has been covering RSR for about two years. My clients are institutional, and I've been building models, trying to find a value for RSR throughout that time. And we got to a point now where all of my clients have finished accumulating RSR, and um, I got permission from them to actually share my latest financial model for RSR with the public. I am um, going to remain anonymous because my point is not to um, you know, tell the world who I am. My point is more to um, give people the tools to see how we value RSR and uh, see what kind of upside we see since the majority of our clients um, you know, have finished accumulating. So the way we look at this is um, the value of RSR depends on obviously how much uh, adoption RSV can manage. And I know the community has been talking about that for years, so this is not news. The way we look at this is we say, what if uh, RSV becomes a global currency, a global reserve currency? Anything less than that uh, is not going to result in much value for RSR. There's 100 billion tokens that are out there. And um, it doesn't matter that only 13 billion have been released. Uh, all 100 billion are going to participate in the cash flows. So when you calculate the value of RSR, you really need to look at all 100 billion tokens. And I know that if in the future the tokens will burn when the protocol makes profits. But remember, if you start calculating anything other than 100 billion, you're double counting future profits. So the only correct way to try to value RSR today, today, where, where all 100 billion tokens still exist, is to divide by 100 billion tokens. So, you know, right now RSR is trading at you know, two and a half cents, um, that's really two and a half billion in market cap. So we're not really number 116 or 120 on coin market cap. We're much higher than that. We're more like number 35. Uh, the market doesn't know that because everybody looks at 13.16 billion tokens as being the total, but economically you need to look at all 100 billion, which could be bad news for people in the short term but given the size of the project, it really, the, the 100 billion is not a, an accident. 100 billion is put in place by the team because that's what it takes to build the global reserve currency. The world is a very big place. And if we're going to think about a global reserve currency, it's not gonna happen with you know, a, a limited number of tokens. You need a lot of tokens and a lot of time. So that's the first point. Given that, our main assumption here is to look at RSR 10 years out. Anything less than that is just going to be a, an erratic high growth company. It's very difficult to value. So the way we look at this is we try to come up with a value for RSR 10 years out and then try to imagine what kind of cash flows are going to come in. So um, looking at this, we think maybe it's suitable to think of RSV as being, let's say the fifth largest currency in the world in 10 years. So not the dollar, not the yen, not the euro, not the yuan, let's say the British pound. And the way to uh, value uh, or to look at the size of the British pound is to look at some measure of money. So M0 and M1 are very small. They're very narrow definitions of money. So we're gonna leave that aside for a second. M3 and M4 are very broad definitions of money. They include very long-term stuff. So a suitable definition of money in our opinion is M2. So starting from there, and let's look at this Excel sheet. M2 in the UK right now is about 3.96 trillion US dollars. If you think about, uh, we need to look at, at M2 in the year 2031, 10 years from now. So let's assume M2 grows in the UK grows 3% annually. What that gives you is $5.3 trillion in 2031. So the estimate here is very straightforward. 
we think the M M2 for the British pound for the UK in 2031 will be about $5.3 trillion. And we think if RSV is tied for fifth place in the world in terms of their size, then we'll assume that RSV market cap will be equal to 100% of UK M2 in 2031. So we take that and we plug it right in here. So what that tells us here is, uh, this is um, RSV at the end of 2031, 5.3 trillion. Now here, here's where imagining the growth comes in. We think about RSV as being mature in 2031, growing at only 1% going forward in the next, you know, 2032 and 33 going forward, it's really just growing very, very little because it, is a, it has already achieved a sizable um, um, amount. And then we work backwards by, by applying an exponential growth. So what we do is we take, we use Euler's number and we, we go back and think over the 10 years, if it had been growing exponentially, exponentially decaying, the growth rate is decaying exponentially, then the previous year would have been roughly 3%. It's not really exactly three, it's you know 2.51, and that one is not exactly one, it's 0.92. Anyway, just bear with me. What happens here is we're doing, we're imagining the growth exponentially. So as you go back, you can see that it has to start, if we're looking at exponential growth, then the growth will be extremely high in 2022 and then decaying as you go forward. And then what that gives us is the ability to look at RSV market cap going backward all the way to here. So what we're saying is it'll be 10 million at the end of 2021. It's at 7 million now, so that's not out of the question. You know, so the model here says RSV will be 10 million at the end of 2021, growing exponentially. So it'll see a huge jump in 2022 to 758 million at the end of the year. And then you're gonna see exponential growth as the world adopts it. It'll go to 21 billion, then 240 billion, then 1.1 trillion, and keeps going until it gets to the size of UK M2 in 2031, all right? Now, the next step is to think about the revenue for the, for the protocol, for the reserve protocol. And we're gonna be conservative. We're gonna say they're only gonna make 1%. I know people have been floating two to 5%, but I think with a project this size, with global adoption, you know, there's gonna be so much competition. Margins are gonna be extremely low on a global scale. And so we think that they're gonna do only 1%. But the 1% is not 1% of this number, it's actually 1% of the average. So let's take this year, for example, to give you an example here, 2022. It started the year with 10 million because that's what it ended 2021 with, right? and it ended the year at 758. So it went from 10 to 758. So really the average balance of RSV throughout the year is the average of 758 and 10 million. So about 380 million or so. And that's what they make the 1% on. So they make 3.84 million on the average balance. And then it keeps going like that. So these that revenue number is not the 1% the of the ending balance, it's 1% of the average for every year. And then we're gonna assume that there are expenses. The protocol is gonna cost money to run, probably not a lot of money, but it will cost something. So we're, we put a flat 20%. No, it's too high, especially in the outer years, they're not gonna spend 10 billion a year in expenses, but it is useful to put some kind of expense number here that's quite conservative. So we, calculate an expense of about 20% every year. And so what that does is you subtract the two and what you get is cash flows to RSR holders. So every year, that's how much cash is available to be distributed to RSR holders. Then what we do here is we use a cost of capital that declines. So the cost of capital, the, 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 for those of you who are not familiar with the discounted cash flow model, which is what this is, um, what you do is if a company makes a lot of money in the outer years, it's not wor it's worth less today because it's happening a long time from now. So in order to figure out how much a dollar 10 years from now is worth today, you got to discount it to the present using some kind of discount rate. 
So when an, ex an investment is risky, that discount rate is high. When an investment is secure that or safe or uh, predictable, that discount rate is low. So what we do here for reserve is we assume anything, any cash flows that happen in 2021 are discounted by 40%. And then 34, then 29, then 25, all the way down to 7% into perpetuity when uh, RSR or in reserve becomes such a stable and long-term project with relatively low risk. And then that allows us to calculate a terminal value, and it allows us to calculate a value for the project every one of those years. So you want to know how much the project is worth in any year, you just look at this row right here. Row 52 shows you the value of the project in any given year. All right. So if, if you bring that to the present all the way here, which reflects all future cash flows based on this model into infinity, the entire value of the project discounted to the present using these, that progressive discount rate. The project today, after all expenses, is worth 142 billion US dollars. And as I said at the beginning, you need to uh, divide that by all 100 billion tokens. And so what that tells you is that the price, the net present value per token, the fair value of RSR today is $1.42. But here's the point. If you hold it for a year, you make 40% because as I said earlier, it's a risky project. So what you're using is a very high discount rate. So the market should reward you for owning RSR during those risky times by giving you 40% return on your money. So the idea here is that RSR is worth $1.42 today. If you hold it for a year, it's gonna be worth $1.99 at the end of 2022. And then it's, it's less risky then. So holding it for another year would only would give you 34%. So it'll be $2.66 and so on. All the way to here. So uh, I hope this is clear uh, that, uh, you know, row 54, that we look at the value of RSR, not in any one year. We look at it on, over multiple years and we take into account the riskiness of the project. So we say, if you, if you buy it today at $1.42, hold on to it for a year, you're gonna make 40%. So that's the idea. And of course, it's not $1.42 today, it's two and a half cents, so it's severely undervalued. But we're saying even if it was trading at $1.42, it would be worth buying, given that it's a risky project and you should make 40% to 2022 and then so on going into the future. Now, these numbers are divided by 100 billion tokens. And so we did, and, and actually, if you wanna stop right here, that is, that is most of what you need to know about the valuation of RSR. But what we've done in this second section down here is we've actually looked at the um, arbitrage process and how much the buyback of tokens is going to add value to the project. All right, so what we need to do here I'm gonna go into that, but just to remind everybody, uh, this is the bulk of the work, all right? I'm just gonna highlight it. This is the bulk of the work. From that, from that point forward, it's a refinement of that, of this. When you look at arbitrage and you look at buyback. So here, what we wanna do is we would like to figure out how much the arbitrage is going to be done at, meaning how much, how much, uh, what is the market value of RSR when it's being bought back to be burned by the protocol? And so we, we just made some assumptions here by saying, okay, it's gonna be trading very low at the beginning, a 90% discount. So it'll be at 19 cents when the project tries to buy it to burn it. All right. And then it's, and then the, as people get to know it better, the discount is going to improve. Right, right up until 10 years from now, it's gonna be trading at the full value per token. So what you have here is assumptions for the buyback price. And then what you have down here is assumptions for the number of tokens after buyback. So we start today with 100 billion tokens. Next year we'll be at 99, then 99.8, then 98.7, and then it keeps dropping. The drop is not huge. And that's why I was telling you that this row is all you need to know that 
what happens here is a refinement. The drop is not huge because the profits are not that big yet. So we don't have so much cash flow that we're really taking a big bite into the number of tokens outstanding in the early years. See, it doesn't even break 90 billion until 2026. And, and when it really gets interesting here, when it goes from 89 billion to 62 billion toward the end, because now you have a lot of profits and they're all being used to buy RSR and burn it. So under this scenario, we start with 100 billion tokens today and it drops slowly at the beginning, drops quite fast toward the end. And then by 2031, you only have 62 billion tokens outstanding. All right. These are some calculations. Um, we don't need to get into right now just to give you uh, to calculate exactly how much that increases the value per token. And so this is the refinement right here after buyback. So it doesn't make a difference this year. And that's what I said earlier that um, you need to look at all 100 billion tokens and the whole arbitrage is going to boost the price. That's going to happen way into the future. So if you compare 2021, the fair value of RSR is, is still exactly the same because we haven't had any, bu any uh, buyback or burning of tokens yet. So it's still a dollar 42. And then here, it's actually only very slightly better. It's instead of a dollar 98, 93, it's a dollar 98, 96, negligible. All right, same thing here. It improves, but not by a lot. Where you get a lot of improvement is toward the end here, where the whole buyback process means that the fair value of RSR in 2031 would be $11 compared to $7.29 if there was no buyback. All right, so that gives you an idea of the valuation here. And, um, you know, that, that is, uh, and of course the annual increase here at the beginning is very similar. And then it gets uh, a lot better in the outer years because of the buyback. So I hope that explains how we think about this. Again, to summarize, this is based on the idea that RSR will be the fifth largest currency in the world 10 years from now, equal to the British pound. And that the project is only gonna make 1% return on the RSV market cap. And that they're gonna have ex expenses of about 20% per year. And then there's gonna be a quite a high cost of capital because it's a pretty risky project and it drops gradually over time. And that pretty much the whole idea of arbitrage, it is a great way of sending profits from the protocol to RSR holders, but it really doesn't matter when you think about the economic value of RSR. So I know the community talks a lot about the idea of never selling only ARBing. That um, doesn't really matter. Think about a company that never pays a dividend, all right? The value is still there even if the company never pays a dividend, all the cash flows belong to the shareholders, whether or not a dividend is paid. Think about arbitrage the same way. All the cash flows that get accumulated into the project belong to RSR holders, whether or not an arbitrage event takes place to release the cash to people in the form of buyback and burn, it's still there. The market should value it whether or not it happens, all right? So in the early years, it's negligible. Eventually it does move the needle a little bit. But for our purposes, if we're really as holders here looking at how much the token is worth in the first two to three years, that's what we're looking at. It doesn't really make a difference. If, you, if I highlight um, those three years here and those three years here with, with or without arbitrage, RSR is about the same value. So that's the important takeaway here is that it's worth about $1.42 this year and it's worth about $1.98, $1.99 at the end of next year. I hope this helps. Again, I'm staying anonymous um, and uh, I might update the model and let you guys know as things develop. I'm not sure uh, what my clients are going to do uh, if I can professionally uh, share future ideas with you, I will. But if not, then this is gonna be a one-off. Thank you.